moments in three dimensions are a lot like moments in two dimensions. You still have a force times the distance is giving you a rotation about a certain axis. We're still going to have the scalar method and the vector method, but while you can use either one, I'm going to really suggest that you use both because as you're working through these things, the scalar method will give you a feel for what's actually rotating. The vector method is simply an easier way of calculating things when you have fully populated R's and F's. So in two dimensions, we have either a force in X and a distance in Y, or a force in Y and a distance in X. Either one of these will give you a moment in Z. So we take the, for, the component of the force times the perpendicular distance, Fx times dy. Now that one happens to be in my picture rotating about 0.0 clockwise. In the Fy times dx happens to be going counterclockwise. I can subtract one from the other to get my moment about 0.0. In three dimensions, first of all, you can't use these little squiggly arrows because it doesn't make any sense. In three dimensions, which way is the clock facing? Is it on this wall or the ceiling? Or It just doesn't make any sense. So we will use primarily Cartesian car components for three-dimensional moments. We can now have forces in either Y and Z giving us moments in X, or forces in X and Z, distances in Z and X to give us moments in Y. Any of those will do. So here's my first attempt at trying to make this a three-dimensional picture that makes sense for you. This is my, I've built a little model here. I have an x-axis, that's my origin, here's my y-axis, and the z-axis. So my origin is back here at the back. I have a point up here, and I want to take my force as acting from this top point down to point F. So F is down here. That is 10 inches in the z-direction and nine and a half inches in the y direction to give me this point of application. F is located a full 14 inches out. So this is my force acting at the top on the line from the top down to point F. And I want to find out what that moment is created at point B down here. So here's my point. Here's my force. What moment do I have in 3D? First, I have to find this force. So I'm going to use position vector, unit vector, multiply. My force goes from this point to this point. So my position vector is 5i plus 4.5j minus 10k. Divide that by its magnitude, its own magnitude, and multiply by f to give me my vector f. Now my vector f clearly has components that are going in along the x-axis. There's going to be some portion of this. It has components that are going along the y-axis, like that, and it's going to have a component that's going along the z-axis, like this. So I have all three components in F. My R goes from the point I'm interested in, B, to the point of application of the force. So my R vector is going to go this way. When I find that, I have B is at 5, 0, 0 inches. If I go from B up to the top, this is my R vector. From the point of interest to the point of application of the force. Once you have R and F, you can take the cross product, plug it into any calculator or computer that you'd like. And this is the moment at B due to this force. Which is all well and good, but you notice I don't have a J component here. It's not immediately obvious why you wouldn't have a J component. So let's talk about the scalar method and what it gets you. As you're looking at this scalar method, I've written my distances here and my forces there. I have three force components. I have three distances. I'm going to go back the x-axis, up the z-axis, and out the y-axis. These are my distances. I've neglected the signs on these because what I want to use is my right-hand rule to find out whether these things are going to be positive or negative because I really want to talk for a minute about what the moment is and how that actually works. So let's talk about the fact that I can have a distance in X and a force in Y. Start there. My distance in X is from here back to there. This is my distance in X. 
my force in y looks like this. When I'm talking about a z rotation, a z moment, I'm talking about holding this right here and asking whether this spins this way or back that way. So my thumb is going to be my, my axis. The thumb is on your axis. Is this spinning backwards or forwards? And if you look at the vectors themselves, you can sort of see how this works. I have a distance in x, I'm going to come back here, and a force in y. If I hold this right here, this force is going to turn it this way. Now how does that work? Put this part of your hand along the x-axis, like that. Curl your fingers in the direction of the force, like this. And your thumb is going to point down. Let me turn it around so you can see a little bit better. I'm going to put my hand, the, the palm of my hand, out the x-axis. I'm going to curl my fingers in the direction of the force, and my thumb points down. That's this one. That gives me a negative z direction. The other choice is that you can have a distance in y. That would be this distance, and a force in x, like that. So if I curl my hand, I put the palm of my hand out the distance, I curl my fingers in the direction of the force, and again, based on keeping this here, that arrow is going to turn this this way. This component of the force acting at a distance there will clearly rotate this about the negative z-axis. So I have a negative z here as well. Once you have these two z's, they're both negative, multiply it out, add it up. So you've got negative this, minus negative this, they're both negative, and you have a total value. When I start talking about the moments in, about the x-axis, I'm talking about whether this, here's my x-axis. If I hold this at b, do the forces from this force acting at that distance spin this down or up? Either of those would be a rotation about the x-axis. So let's look at each component. I have a distance in y, put my hand out there, and I have a force in z. So if I have a distance in y and a force in z, my thumb is pointing in the negative x direction. So this one is negative also. Now the other choice is to have a distance in z. Well, this is my distance in z. And now my force is in the y direction. Here you go. If I put my palm of my hand up the z-axis and I rotate my fingers in the direction of the force, my thumb is pointing in the negative x direction. So again, I have a negative x. Now this is the last one. The last one comes in the y direction. And as I need to figure this out, remember when we did the cross product, we got zero here. Why is it zero? Well, let's take a look. If you have a distance in x and a force in z, here's my force in z, here's my distance in x, and I'm looking at what happens about the y-axis. The y-axis goes like this. So from b, your, your wrist goes at b. If I have my hand going in the distance in x and the force in z over here, this is clearly tipping about the negative y-axis. So my wrist is at b. If I put the palm of my hand out the x distance and I curl in the direction of the force, I have a negative y here. The last one says I have a distance in z. Here's my distance in z. Here's my force in x. Now if I put my hand up like this and I curl my fingers, I have a quite different thumb. All of a sudden I have a positive thumb. So one of these, this one's going to be negative, this one's going to be positive. That happens to be the way I built this thing. That gives you zero. But you can see that it's going to be zero because those two are the same. 5 times 0 0.830 and 10 times 0 0.415, those are going to add up to zero. So this is the kind of thing we're going to do. We're going to look at a couple other videos just with other examples with this where I can actually turn it. And we'll do a lot from pictures. You can't just do a cross product. Now, when you get to the test, it's important that you can do a cross product because it is faster. But at the end of the day, 
Some of you have made m mistakes with negative ones in, a, in the middle of a cross product from time to time. I have clicker questions that I can prove it. So how do you find out whether your signs are correct? How do you check your work? You've got to be able to do the hand waving because the hand waving tells you what's actually happening with your system. 